Campi Flegre is cracking apart. Official bulletins claimed 178 quakes in a single week, but real counts top 1,880 and most are dangerously shallow. The ground is rising faster than before, hot gas is surging, and even monitoring stations are being abandoned because the risk inside the red zone is too high. This isn't just brady -seeism. The volcano is escalating out of control. Why are officials insisting it's all routine, and what are they not telling us about what happens next? Official bulletins from Campi Flegre list 178 earthquakes for the week of October 20th to 26th. But when every tremor is counted, including the smallest, fastest, and most tightly clustered events, the real number rockets past 1,880 in just eight days. Some AI-driven catalogs, using deep learning to scan raw seismic data, push that total as high as 2,080 for the same period. This isn't a minor discrepancy. It's a fundamental disagreement about what's actually happening beneath the surface. The difference starts with how events are detected and defined. Traditional bulletins, like those from INGV, rely on a mix of automated systems and human analysts to pick out earthquakes. Their focus stays on the larger, clearer shakes, usually those above magnitude 1.0 or 1.2, where signals stand out against background noise. But during a swarm, when hundreds of tiny quakes can rattle the caldera in a single hour, many get lost in the chaos. Overlapping signals blur together, and rapid-fire sequences are often counted as a single event or missed entirely. AI-enhanced methods, developed in collaboration with Stanford and Italian researchers, flip this script. These algorithms can pick out faint overlapping tremors that would otherwise vanish into the background. By matching patterns from past quakes and using deep learning to spot even the weakest signals, AI catalogs routinely report three to five times more events during swarm peaks than official bulletins do. For Campi Flegre's October swarm, this means the host's claim of nearly 1,900 quakes isn't an exaggeration. It's the direct result of using every available tool to count what's really shaking the ground. The stakes aren't just academic. Each additional quake, especially when most are shallow, within two or three kilometers of the surface, means more fractures opening in the cap rock, more pressure building, and more risk for people living above. When the official count lags far behind what's actually happening, reassurance starts to sound hollow. The numbers matter because they reveal just how fast the volcano's unrest is accelerating. Most of the earthquakes shaking Campi Flegre aren't buried deep underground. They're clustered in the uppermost layers, between one and three kilometers below the surface. That's not just a technical detail. It means the brittle cap rock, the solid shell that holds back the volcano's pressurized fluids, is cracking open almost directly beneath people's feet. When swarms erupt at these shallow depths, the shaking is felt widely across Pozzuoli and the western suburbs of Naples. Even moderate events can rattle windows, jolt buildings, and send families rushing outside in the middle of the night. Seismic catalogs from the October 2025 swarm, including those using the most advanced AI detection, show that over 80% of located events occurred within this critical shallow zone. The densest clusters trace a jagged arc beneath Solfatara and Pichirelli, precisely where the ground is already rising and new fumaroles vent scalding steam. Double difference relocation methods, now standard in Italian monitoring, pin the modal depth of these quakes at just 1.5 to 2.7 kilometers. Vertical uncertainties are narrow, often less than 300 meters, leaving little doubt about where the fracturing is happening. This isn't the behavior of a quiet, stable system. The shallow focus of these events means the cap rock is being forced apart, not by distant tectonic shifts, but by pressure building up from below. Each quake represents a small rupture, a new path for gas, heat, or fluids to surge upward. Some researchers describe the process as a pressure valve being forced open, one brittle snap at a time. The more the cap rock cracks, the less it can contain the restless energy beneath. That's why these shallow swarms are so alarming. 
They're not just numbers on a chart, but real evidence that the volcano is searching for a way to relieve its growing internal strain. When so many earthquakes erupt so close to the surface, it's a sign that the system isn't simply cycling through a harmless phase. The pattern matches what's seen in other calderas under stress, fractures propagating upward, deformation accelerating, and the ground itself acting as both a barrier and a warning siren. At Campi Flegri, the depth of these quakes tells the story of a volcano pushing hard against its own limits. Ground movement at Campi Flegre doesn't follow a steady rhythm. It pulses, surges, and sometimes slows, revealing a system under constant negotiation between pressure and resistance. In January, GNSS stations across the caldera measured an uplift rate of about 1.5 centimeters per month. That pace held until mid-February, when a sudden seismic swarm sent the numbers soaring. Over just a few days, the uplift rate doubled, reaching about 3 centimeters per month. Daily displacement charts from the right station show a sharp upward slope during the February 15th to 19th window, matching the burst of earthquakes and signaling a rapid injection of pressure from below. The surge didn't last. By early April, the uplift rate eased back to around 1.5 centimeters per month. For a few weeks, the ground seemed to catch its breath, but the pause was only temporary. As the months rolled on, the rate crept up again, now hovering near 2 cm per month. This sequence, steady climb, sudden spike, brief slowdown, renewed acceleration, mirrors the episodic nature of the unrest. It's not a smooth escalation, but a series of bursts, each one marking a new round in the struggle between rising fluids and brittle rock. Cumulative uplift since January 2025 at the Wright Station now stands at roughly 18 centimeters. These numbers aren't just abstract measurements. Each pulse of uplift means more strain on the caldera's cap rock, more cracks opening, and more pathways for heat and gas to reach the surface. The data show a volcano that isn't drifting through a harmless cycle, but lurching forward in fits and starts, each phase more urgent than the last. Across Campi Flegri, the ground is not just rising, it's stretching apart. GNSS stations, 40-1 now that Sulfatara's SO station is out of commission, form a dense web across the caldera, tracking every subtle shift in the earth. At the heart of this network, the right station in Pozzuoli records a vertical climb, 18 centimeters of uplift since January 2025. This is not an isolated bump. The entire central caldera is moving, and the numbers show it plainly, but the real story is not just up and down, it's sideways. The baseline between Piscirelli and La Staza, two key GNSS stations, has lengthened by about 5 to 6 centimeters since the start of the year. That means the caldera floor is pulling apart, not just inflating. INSAR satellite maps confirm this pattern, showing vectors of motion that radiate outward from the central uplift tracing the stress lines of a system under pressure. The 39-station GNSS network is designed for exactly this kind of moment. With one station lost to demolition inside the red zone, the rest keep watch, measuring both the vertical push and the lateral stretch. Each centimeter of change is logged, compared, and mapped against the backdrop of swelling unrest. This dual movement, rising and stretching, signals a powerful buildup of strain. The caprock is not only being lifted by pressurized fluids below, but also pulled apart across the caldera's broad expanse. It's a mechanical reality that can't be explained away as routine Bradyseism. The ground is deforming in three dimensions, and every new measurement adds to the sense that the system is approaching its limits. Heat is pouring out of Campi Flegre's surface. At the Piscirelli vent, Temperatures hover near 94 degrees Celsius, just below the boiling point of water at sea level. This isn't a fleeting spike. For months, the vent has held steady at these levels, with thick steam clouds and the constant hiss of escaping gas. Not far away, the BG fumarole, officially labeled LXOV5, has become even more intense. Sensors there record an average temperature of 166 degrees, with bursts reaching up to 170 degrees Celsius. That's not just hot air. Those numbers point directly to a hydrothermal reservoir that's heating up, forcing energy to the surface. 
Thermal monitoring teams track these sites day and night. The data show a clear pattern. The system beneath Pozzoli is getting hotter and it's staying hot. When vent temperatures rise and hold, it means the deep fluids, water, gas, even a little magma, are moving closer to the surface, carrying heat with them. The difference between 94 and 170 degrees might sound abstract, but in volcanic systems, it's a warning sign. The shallow rocks can only absorb so much before they start to crack, vent, or even explode. People living nearby don't need a thermometer to sense the change. Asphalt softens on the roads near Piscirelli. Steam curls from cracks in the pavement. The air smells sharper, more acidic. All of it points to a reservoir below ground that's building pressure and refusing to cool off. In the language of volcanoes, rising vent temperatures are the system's way of raising its voice. Carbon dioxide emissions at Campi Flegre don't just rise in a straight line, they pulse, spike, and shift, drawing a jagged curve that tells its own story. At the V07 monitoring station, the recent trend is hard to ignore. From August 2024 through February 2025, carbon dioxide concentrations shot up sharply, tracking a period of intense seismic swarms and ground movement. After that, there was a brief dip, a pause that coincided with a lull in uplift and a temporary easing of earthquake activity. But the relief didn't last. Since late winter, carbon dioxide readings have resumed their climb, with values now pushing steadily higher month after month. This surge dip rebound pattern isn't random. It reflects the struggle between pressurized fluids deep below and the fractured pathways that let gas escape to the surface. When the caprock cracks, more gas finds its way up, and the sensors at V07 catch every change. The system is dynamic, with pathways opening and closing as pressure builds, then finds relief. Each new spike in carbon dioxide suggests another breach, a sign that the volcano is breathing harder, forcing more of its stored energy out through the ground. Short-term weather can blur the picture. Heavy rain or high humidity sometimes dampen the carbon dioxide signal at the surface, masking the true scale of degassing for days or even weeks. But those blips don't change the underlying trend. Over the long term, the numbers from V07 keep rising, confirming that the deep reservoir is still feeding gas upward. The volcano's breathing is getting louder, and the pathways are growing more complex. This isn't a stable, cycling system. It's one that's searching for release. The Sulfatara SOGNSS station once stood as a sentinel inside the red zone, feeding real-time data to scientists tracking every millimeter of ground movement. That station is now gone, decommissioned and dismantled, its site overtaken by the demolition of an unsafe school building in Pozzuoli. The loss isn't just a technical setback, it's a warning about what daily life means when your home sits inside an active caldera. Pozzuoli's neighborhoods, dense with families and apartment blocks, are laced with reminders that the crisis isn't just scientific. Roads near Piscirelli bubble and soften, asphalt warping under the heat and gas pushing from below. Steam seeps through cracks in the pavement, curling around the feet of children heading to school. Residents swap phone videos of their commutes, showing new patches of roadwork, hissing vents, and utility crews racing to fix ruptured water lines. Inside one family's apartment, the reality of living with a restless volcano is measured in sleepless nights and rising anxiety. When the ground shakes, even briefly, parents check the emergency kit by the door. Kids know the drill, grab shoes, wait for the all clear, listen for the sirens that sometimes wail without warning. Utility bills inch upward as gas and water systems strain to keep up with shifting ground. The family keeps a list of evacuation routes updated after every local drill, but the maps change as new cracks appear and old roads close for repairs. Civil protection officials run evacuation exercises, but the sheer number of people, more than half a million in the immediate red zone, makes every scenario feel incomplete. The loss of the SO station means one less eye on the ground, but for the families living above, the real loss is a sense of security. The volcano's warning signs are everywhere, and the margin for error is shrinking. Calling this crisis just Bradycism is more than a technical choice. It shapes how risk is seen, managed, and communicated. 
The word bradycism describes slow ground movement, a familiar cycle for those living around Campi Flegre. But that term carries a promise of routine, even safety. It suggests the system will pulse and settle as it has in the past. That framing now feels dangerously out of step with the evidence. The volcano is not simply inflating and deflating on a schedule. It's showing signs of mechanical stress, rapid uplift, and shallow fracturing that go beyond what Bradyseism alone can explain. Authorities rely on scenario planning to guide response. Official bulletins avoid hard numbers, but the practical outlook splits along two paths. In Scenario A, current unrest continues. Earthquakes, ground movement, and gas emissions persist, perhaps with brief lulls or surges, but without a major escalation. In Scenario B, the system tips, uplift or seismicity accelerates, surface vents spike in temperature or new fractures open, pushing the caldera closer to eruption. While most communications lean towards Scenario A as the more likely outcome, the absence of precise odds reflects scientific caution, not certainty. No dashboard or traffic light alert can guarantee which path the volcano will take. For those living and working in the caldera, the signals to watch are clear. A sudden jump in the number or strength of earthquakes, especially if felt widely. Uplift rates that exceed 2 cm per month for more than a few weeks. Fumarole temperatures rising sharply or gas emissions climbing beyond recent highs. New surface phenomena, bubbling roads, fresh vents, or unexplained steam demand immediate attention. These are the triggers that civil protection dashboards track in real time, each one feeding into the decision-making process behind every alert level. The official dashboards do not predict the future, but they do offer a window into what's happening now and what could change without warning. Between October 20th and 28th, 2025, at least 1,880 earthquakes shook Campi Flegre, more than 10 times the figure in official bulletins. Most events were shallow, concentrated in the upper 3 kilometers, a sign of caprock fracturing under rising pressure. Ground uplift at the central GNSS station reached 18 centimeters since January, with rates now averaging 2 centimeters per month. Gas monitoring shows CO2 flux and fumarole temperatures continuing to climb, with the BG vent peaking near 170 degrees Celsius. Despite these clear indicators, the risk to over 500,000 residents remains debated, as key monitoring stations are offline and authorities frame the crisis as just Bradyseism. No official report explains why activity is accelerating or how quickly conditions could shift. The record shows that Campi Flegre is not following a simple cyclical pattern, as long as seismicity, uplift, and gas output stay elevated. The threat remains unresolved and the need for transparent, timely information is more urgent than ever.